Ladies and gentlemen, today is January 21st, 2014, and this is The Can Kale Show, episode 156. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today is Tutorial Tuesday, where we like to learn to be better artists. And because I'm not going to be doing a show tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to be going to see my brother graduate from Marine Boot Camp way the heck down in San Francisco tomorrow and Thursday, so I will not be with you. So in honor of that, we are going to be combining the last two days, whatever Wednesday, where I draw your own characters, and Thoughtful Thursday, maybe, somewhere just kind of thrown in there, and I give you Tutorial Thoughtful Whatever Tuesday. Today we're going to be, yes, drawing your characters, and we're going to be focusing specifically on design, like what makes a memorable, fun design for a character. But before we get into that, a couple announcements, or first we're going to take Stroll down the lovely lane because this is where all of the inspiration comes from. from. Awesome artists like you, for those of you who have not come out of your shells and posted to the Facebook, please consider doing so. You can find the link down in the description on the YouTube video. And hey, yeah, if I like your character, I will draw it on Wednesdays. And yeah, so thank you once again to everybody who submitted. Lastly, uh, those who have joined me on Patreon, we are now basically shooting for 300 bucks. Thank you to everyone who's helped me get to 200 bucks. Get to 200 bucks. I'm gonna be sending out these prints to the people who helped me get to 300 bucks. But that's another story for another time. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial, shall we? The reason why I know you showed up, I know why you all showed up. Let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and time lapse what we're working on today, and in the meantime, I will pull up the characters we're drawing. So the first drawing is coming in from Bob Tinsley. And this is his character right here that I pulled up from the Facebook. Really liked it a lot. This is by far uh, like the epitome of what we're going to be talking about today as far as memorable characters go. And you can see me basically just kind of sketching it in. I don't know exactly what these spots were. I imagine she's possibly a giraffe person. She's possibly, quite possibly a giraffe with this nice style. She's got this awesome top hat thing going on or whatever this thing is. What I also really liked about Bob's design is this little, it's not just a hat, it's like, it's got like weight to it. It's kind of like just like flopped onto her head. And then it's got like this little frayed edge to it. So I wanted to make sure I captured that. And I do believe uh, her name is Julie. That's the name that's written here. So I, I really hope that's me. Unless Julie is Bob's alias. Next one is coming in from Iquan Sia. And I hope I did not butcher that name too badly. But Equan submitted this really awesome little furry dude right here, and I really liked him a lot. And this again, we're we're gonna go back into all of these, you know, talking about what makes a, a good design and all that stuff as we go forward. But the reason why I like this is a because it's very iconic. It's got a really cool shape to it, and it's cute and it's freaking awesome. I really like this mouth. This reminds me of uh, it. Just seems like a very animator friendly type of style, and I see a lot of this type of. Uh, I don't know, I just see a lot of this stuff happening in cartoons. And it just goes to show that, you know, to make a memorable character, to make a memorable character, it doesn't have to be completely super detailed. It can actually be very simple and super iconic and to the point where, you know, you see this once and then you see it again, you'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that. All right. We're going to be delving into that a little bit later. And lastly, before we start talking about real design and just getting into, you know, the depths of it. We have one more submission coming in from Rachel. And I can't say that last name, so I'm not even going to try. But this one's coming in from Rachel, and this character by far was one of my absolute favorites. And it's basically, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up right here as I'm working on it. It's basically this girl, and it looks like a Arctic Amazon, right? She's got the nice muscly legs going on and the cool blade. Uh, and it looks like as though she has skinned a penguin alive and is now wearing its flesh as she is uh, doing winter Amazon things. <laughs> I saw this, I was like, this is quite possibly one of the coolest designs I have ever seen. So I was like, instantly saw it, I was like, that is just, that is next Wednesday, or this Tuesday, for that matter. So, and the reason why I like it, again, is because it just seems like it has everything. It's got like the sexy lady. Right? But then it has like an element of, of humor to it because of the, the penguin suit. And then it just has all these memorable shapes. Right, It just has like the penguin face. It's got the hair over here. And like the, the bodysuit, which is all like furry and stuff. I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. Really, really awesome design, Rachel. 
and thank you for enlightening and and bestowing your creativity upon the Facebook job ja Facebook so those are our three submissions that we're gonna be talking about today and yeah with that we're gonna go ahead and jump into our finished file or where we are now where we stand now we're going to talk a little bit about what really drew my eye towards these because you'll notice uh, a common theme that I always tell you guys about is the characters that I like to draw, the characters that really catch my eye, are those with very, like, iconic features, very recognizable, very, like, I don't want to say necessarily, well, they are original, but a lot of people ha go into the false assumption that in order to make a, a truly awesome character, it has to be completely original, like, nobody has to have made anything close to this before, when actually, you can create very simple or even generic characters, but because of the style that you put into it, it can then become very iconic and awesome. So, the first thing I want to talk about is silhouette. Silhouette is one of the most important things I feel when you're designing a memorable character. And I think the best, the best um, example of this is going to be from Equan. Equan's a uh, little furry character here. So I'm going to go ahead and take away all of these things right now, and we're going to talk strictly silhouette. So what is silhouette? I'm sure you guys know what this is, but anyway, silhouette is basically the outside of your character, okay? So the, the lines that make up your character. So here is your, here's your amazing stick man, okay? So this line that, that goes around your entire character, this is your silhouette, okay? And this is one of the most important things that you can think of when you're designing a character. Not everybody has to have a memorable silhouette, but I want you to think about some of your favorite characters or some of the most iconic characters that you've ever seen, right? A lot of these characters have very, very memorable silhouettes, and they're usually very simple, right? Very, very simple uh, silhouettes will call to mind certain characters, all right? And uh, I'm just going to draw a couple here. Let's see if you can guess who they are. <laughs> I've drawn these from memory, so uh, don't <laughs> so zoom me. <laughs> Let's see if you can guess who these characters are. But a lot of the most iconic characters and characters that I love growing up have always been characters that have very, very iconic silhouettes. Um, let's see if I can do this one. <laughs> oh, man. This is interesting. I wonder... I want to like challenge you guys to like draw some draw some of your favorite characters using just silhouettes. I wonder if you could do that. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like, but whatever. Okay, so anyway, point being, um, your characters should always always be thinking about the silhouettes of your characters. And going back to Equan's thing, see how it has these really cool callouts. And this is another thing that uh, another term of verbiage. It's almost like an insider term that artists use or. Whatever. Not everybody knows what a callout is, but basically a callout is anything that sticks off of the main silhouette. So, for instance, the tail. The tail would be a callout. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the callouts on each of these characters. Why not? Why not? Basically, a callout, I would say, is if you draw a man, you draw just like a head, and then you draw a top hat on him, the top hat is now the callout, right? The total biscuit, total biscuit top hat, that is now the callout. So in the case of our little furry friend here, his tail is a callout, the ears, callouts. Uh, same thing with this girl here, Julie. I really like her ears sticking out and her hat. Very, very cool callouts. The hair here, this, like the box shape on the head, this is very, very cool, cool things that are, that are working to our advantage to create memorable silhouettes. However, I want to move into the next part of this, which is... Um, that it not you don't have to worry completely about oh well my character is not going to be recognizable or iconic unless I have like this big gigantic thing jutting off its head you know and that's per personally I think that that is something if you can do it then you definitely should do it but don't feel like you always have to because point being and I'm going to again once try to illustrate this the best I can I'm gonna draw <laughs> I'm gonna draw the silhouette of somebody and I want you to tell me who it is. Okay, and this is, this is, I don't know if I should say who it is, but you might not know who it is at first, and that's probably a good thing. Okay, so you see this silhouette right here, okay? This is a, guy, this is a guy's head, okay? Do you know who this man is? Who is this man? 
No, you, you can't really tell, right? Uh, there's nothing really, there's no call outs happening. There's nothing sticking off his head that lets us know that it's, I don't know, the Pikachu with, you know, this little flare thing happening on his hair. Pikachu with a faux hawk. No. But, however, if I were to do this, if I were to draw this in, now can you tell me what character this is? And no, it's not Hulk Hogan. It's not Hulk Hogan. It's supposed to, the right answer would be Clem. Clem from Emma Comic Online, my own comic, okay? So this is an example of a shape within the silhouette that can help identify your character. And I hope that that was a good example. I'm assuming that most of you guys know the comic and know my character. Okay, but he also has like the little bandana things that stick off and kind of do that thing. But in actuality, I think that Clem's most defining feature about him is something that's happening within his silhouette. And that would be his uh, his mustache. Some people are saying Cassidy. Yes, it could also be Cassidy. <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe <laughs> maybe that wasn't the best example. That was the best one I could think of because that's that's an example of something that I've used in my own work. So, um, moving on, let's let's talk about shapes within. Let's let's go back to our three characters and let's highlight the shapes within that are working well and helping to identify character. So the shapes within that I'm seeing in these are things such as, I really like the fact that these spots are being used in, in Julie, or, or from Bob, Bob Tinsley's character, Julie. I like these spots that are being used here and here. Like those things are, are very iconic. Not, not everybody has like spots on their face. And then another thing that's really cool actually that he did was, I don't know if I represented them properly or not here, but she has like these gigantic, like huge eyelashes, like springing out from her eyes. Um, as well as, and this can also come down to clothing design as well, like uh, specifically here. I think something that's really cool about Rachel's character is that it has this like opening right here in the fur lining. I really like that a lot, as well as, you know, like the scarf and then the face and just, just the way it's covered, you know. A lot of characters have the, the hair over the eye, right? We've seen that before. But have you seen the hair over the eye with penguin hat atop? Huh? I think not, and that's why that makes this design freaking awesome, because it's something that we can relate to. In fact, uh, this is a common theme that uh, we used to talk about at Riot when we were designing champions for League of Legends. We'd start with an archetype. We'd start with something that people are sort of, um, they're already familiar with, but then we'd add our own flair onto it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you don't have to be completely original with your character design. Pick something that people can relate to, Right? And then you kind of take them by the hand and you take them to the new land of opportunity. Show them your characters. Um, what I really like about this guy is, again, very, very simple. But just these eyes, just these giant eyes coupled with the silhouette of these ears, that is what makes this character for me. This and that. Like if you were to just draw those two shapes together, I would instantly say it was Equan's little fuzzy creature. All right, Eve. Now let's talk about style. Style is the last thing that I want to talk about because it's a very nebulous thing. It's a, it's a, it's a whole entire like frontier that is yet to be discovered. It is still being discovered to this day. But I do want to sort of delve into that just a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and close this or just rather hide that for just a moment. And I think what's very interesting about style, considering style, is that... When it comes down to something that you're drawing in your own style, in a very iconic style, you can almost let go of the other two rules that we've discussed, meaning silhouette and, and shapes within, right? It might still technically be shapes within, but you can draw a head like this, right? You can draw a guy's head. And then depending on what you place within that, it will tell completely what style you're working with. You can work with a style that's as simple as this, right? You can work with that. Or you can work with something like this, right? Or those two eyes are supposed to be the same size. And the case in point that I'm trying to make here is that I've seen specifically regarding style is Scott Pilgrim. 
Scott Pilgrim, I think, has a very, like, their characters are very, like, they're just, they're pretty normal. Like, the designs of the Scott Pilgrim characters are very, very normal. But what he has going for them, like, they don't have, like, what, what I mean by that is they don't have, like, horns, like, sticking off their head. They don't have big old, like, dramatic bandanas or capes flowing in the wind. They're just normal people with, you know, shirts on and, and, and pants, hopefully, maybe. Most of the time they have pants. But you know what I'm saying? And really what um, Scott Pilgrim has going for it is the style, the style that they use uh, to draw the faces. And I can't draw the, I'm not going to try to draw it, but you know what I'm saying. Basically, that is what uh, creates the iconicness of it. And so, but, however, I personally think that it's a really cool idea to try to aim for all three. Try to go for uh, having a memorable silhouette of your character, um, as well as having interesting shapes within, and then having a cool style to really back it up. It's almost like the full package. But you might want to just focus on... Maybe it's good to focus on one. Maybe it's good to focus on all three. I don't know. Personally, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out as I go about making my comic. But then you can, I don't know, you can make up really weird stuff too. I don't know. <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> tough to, to make up. I want to draw one more. It's like hyper real. <laughs> We're going to draw one more that's hyper real. So really consider that, guys, when you're making characters. Oh, oh, here's the thing. Here's the point that I was trying to make. If you're designing a character and you don't want to create a memorable silhouette or you don't want to have a big giant thing sticking off his head or, you know, it's not just the head, it's like any part of the body. If you don't want to have something really iconic by that, then you must have a unique style. Otherwise, your character is just going to blend into all the other pink-haired anime girls and then all the other blue-haired monster dudes. You know, they're all going to, it just kind of like mushes into this like single blob of generic characters and just kind of like predictable kind of boring characters and um, yeah and really it can be remedied by as simply as developing style like I said if you think that you might have a generic character I don't know it's like it, it's not for me to say whether a generic character my characters are generic for all I know but um, like that's why I say just focus on really getting that style style I think it will never betray you in the meantime, I think it's time for Question Catapults! <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, please cast your questions over the castle walls as has been dis described and demonstrated in the video. And I totally just remembered, I forgot to put the name of the animator of that video. That is someone0956. Until I put that name on there, I will continue to say it. Please cast your questions regarding design. Or the castle walls, we'll talk about them. And then we're going to go ahead and... Oh! Wait a minute. Oh, man, we've only been going for 25 minutes? Ah, shoot! I said I was going to do a longer daily today. Ha! Ah. All right, well, I am a man of my word. I am a man of my word. We're probably just going to mess around for the last half an hour. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no, no. What we have to do is we, no, I totally forgot. We have to go back in and we have to color these characters. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Plenty of time left. But we'll answer questions right now because this, this will end the, the tutorial uh, segment of the daily. And after this, we'll move on to more of the whatever Wednesday part of the daily. And we'll go for another 20, 25 minutes. How about that? How about that? Alrighty then. In the meantime, any questions you have, just go ahead and chuck them, chuck them, send them. In the meantime, I'm gonna draw a hyper real face. Hyper, hyper real face. Mm -hmm. Or not hyper real, <laughs> as hyper real as I can. And, you know, with the limited time that I have. Yeah. Let's give them uh, nice hyper real ears. Must have hyper real ears. Otherwise, your character will not be taken seriously. Uh, Beowulf is asking, Do I like scarves? Yes, I do believe scarves are always a good thing. Scarves just make any character more awesome. Bandanas make a character more awesome, too. Can't remember who said that. There was once I was, I was drawing with a, with a friend of mine, 
and he said, if you want to make any character look cooler, just put a headband on. Any character you put a headband on, they instantly look way cooler. I don't know if it's just because it's like Rambo or what the deal is, but it just it speaks to us. It speaks to us. Only badasses wear bandanas. Okay, if you're not a badass, you cannot wear a bandana. Hyper real nose. Not really though. Semi hyper real. It's as hyper real as I get nowadays. I don't, I don't do no more of this. No more of this League of Legends splash stuff. I don't do that. Unless I'm being paid a pretty penny. Then I like to focus on comics. Comics. Okay. Questions coming in? <laughs> People, uh, <laughs> Boca Loca Mocha saying, have your parents ever told you to shut up because you're yelling too loud in your shows? No! They haven't. And if they have, then they don't have to deal with it too much longer because I'm going to get my own place soon. Woo! My own apartment. My own apartment. It's specifically for starving artists, because out here in Utah, we have what they call low-income housing, which is perfect for people trying to start their own comic and their own business out here. So, super excited about that. Moving in with my two best buddies. Mm -mm. Yeah! Taking care of business. A couple more questions, and then we're going to go ahead and jump back into our awesome submissions and color. Color. Mm. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Kelsey said something. Oh! When I try to change the proportions of my human characters uh, to make their silhouettes more interesting, they tend to look odd. How do you go about adding interesting features without sacrificing anatomy? Oh! Whoa! That is such a good question. I don't know if I really have the answer right now. Because I know exactly what you're saying. It's kind of like... I don't know. It's like, how do you make a character, instead of you know having regular proportions, right? This is... This is my regular proportions. How do you go about, you know, messing around with the proportions and making them really, you know, awesome, right? Really awesome. You know, here's one, and then you got, you know, the other way, where it's like big chest, small hips. <laughs> I don't know. See, this is why I have a hard time <laughs> talking about this. Um, it's almost something that you almost have to feel. That's the way that I look at it, is that you just, you really have to experiment. And it's not necessarily something that people can tell you the right way or the wrong way to do it because, again, it, it's your style. It's your take on anatomy. Some character, some artists draw like some some uh, artists draw in styles where people look at it and are like, "What the heck is that?" You know. But because they're the only one that does that and they do it the best, they do it better than anybody else. They become known for that. You know, it's just like, "Oh, that's that person's style." They draw really long, noodly arms or really huge giraffe necks and paint their people blue. You know. It like it doesn't necessarily matter. It's just it's something that you have to experiment with and you have to try it out for yourself. I hope that helps you out, Kelsey. I know it's kind of a vague answer, but it's basically me saying I, I do not have the right to tell you what to do. And just experiment. Because that's the fun of it. That's the fun of it. Okay. Uh, last question coming in from Burstcraft. Mm -hmm. How do you stylize hair correctly? From detailed to sharp or less detailed? Or just simple? I tend to find, or I find hair to be hard, and stylizing it is even harder for me. Any tips to make them better? Yes, um, that's a great question, Birchcraft. And basically, the way that I did this, the way that I did this with Emma, was at first I was drawing Emma like like this, right? Like here's a, here's just a quick face, and she's like that, right? And I was like, okay, let's draw her hair, and she had like all of these like strands of hair. You know, like doing this thing and, you know, sort of like this. It was just really, really detailed. All these lines were in it, right? And she had like these realistic ears. I don't know. I was trying to basically make her hair way too... There was too many lines happening within it. And then my good buddy Larry Ray, who was working with me at Riot Games, he took me aside and he basically drew Emma's hair shape like this. He drew it like this. And this is something, I don't know if it will necessarily apply to you, but start to think about, especially if you're drawing like a comic book type hair, start thinking about your hair in terms of the actual shape 
like just the shape of it. And then you get something like this, right? And that's basically what Emma's hair turned into. It went from this with all of this detail and crazy stuff happening, strands like flying off and everything, to just the shape. And I know that that's just for the comic style, but in terms of hair, I don't know, it really just comes down to, to thinking of it in shapes as opposed to drawing strands of hair. Don't draw strands. And uh, a good thing for you to do might be to go back and check out some of the other dailies that I have on painting hair. Painting hair and, uh, yeah, just kind of like stylized hair. That might help you out. So, all righty then. Uh, some people are saying, what about African-American hairstyle? That is something that I'm going to be getting into very soon, actually. I'm going to be going into how to paint the hair of our African-American brethren, or whatever you want to call it, dreadlocks, froze, all that good stuff. Because that's something that I have been wanting to study as well. So, with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump into the second half of today's daily. And this beanie is burning off my head. It is burning off my hairs of the head. Oh, man, it's hot in here. Woo! Oh! All right. Well, that was fun. That was just so much fun. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab our characters that we worked on today. Let's go ahead and bring them into Photoshop. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Burst crap? No, I'm sorry. We will not be going for three hours. We're going for about an hour. However long it takes me to color these characters. Shouldn't take too long. But I'm a man of my word. I promised you guys a longer daily today, and that is what you're going to get before I go off and play my video games. Play me games. Okay. So uh, i got to figure out how I'm going to organize these. Because usually I like to have the character or the pictures down here. Might have to end up moving some of the names a little bit. Let's start with Bob Tinsley, Mr. Tinsley. Ah, and I just had a sloppy Joe before I started the show. And needless to say, it was good. It was very good. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. So let's begin with the color, shall we? That does. Mmm. Are you serious? Well, let's look at the bright side here. Let's look at the bright side. <laughs> let's, look, let's look at the bright side. I like to be positive. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. That was just that was the moment of silence that I had, so that way we could then like officially move into the second part of the show. Officially move into the second part of the show by meeting myself. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. This is why I keep you around. This is why I keep you around. In fact, I was talking crap about you guys the whole time my mic was muted, so I'm really glad that didn't go through. Really glad that didn't go through. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, let's continue. I was basically just saying, hey, I'm in color based on your your colors, so no complaining. 
No complaining. Or maybe that was heard before I... I don't even know. I'm just going to shut up and color. I'm just going to shut up and color. Okay. Because now we are in part two. We are in phase two. Phase two of today's show. And that is relaxation. Relaxation. Uh, let's not forget these awesome purple eyes. Wow. Wow. Purple eyes. Very cool. Love it. Mm hmm. Uh, let's get these eyes back in there. Mm hmm. I dare say I like it. I dare say I like it. Let's get this blue, really cool blue on here. Yeah. Yeah. And let's not forget about our golden giraffe bell. Whatever that is around her neck. Apologize if that's not a bell, but now it is. Now it is, Bob. Now it is. All right. So, I actually do want to kind of clean up a little bit of these lines. Let's clean up a little bit around the eye area. I'll color the lines and do a little bit of overpainting because we got we got time to spare, people. We got 15 minutes. 15 minutes to color these other characters. Like plenty of time. Plenty of time. I might even go further if I feel crazy enough, but it just depends on how crazy I'm feeling. Crazy. So, mm, mm, this this feels a little bit weird. Like my my body is telling myself that the show should be over right now. But it's not. It's not. And it will not be over until we're done. But yeah. I just, I don't know. I feel like I've run out of things to say. I feel like I, I could actually shut up for once. Oh, man. That's a weird feeling. Hmm. But I am excited to see my brother tomorrow. Super excited to see him. Or rather, um, two days from now. Yes, because we got to drive to San Francisco. And that's going to take about 10 hours from Utah. And that'll be tons of fun. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, I have no idea what you guys are saying over here in the chat. It looks like you guys are causing a ruckus. <laughs> Maybe I will take the second round of questions. I don't know. <laughs> Double question catapult. Anything just roll. Let's just roll the, the, the video again. Any, any excuse we, we get just to roll it. All right. Uh, I am going to put a little bit of color back into these eyes. A little bit of hue shifting. A bit of hue. Shifting always makes our characters look nice. Cool. Cool. We'll come back and do some overpainting in just a moment. In the meantime, let's move on to Equan. Equan and his fuzzy critter. I don't know what this thing would be named, but anybody has any ideas as to what you would call this thing? Fluffachu, fl fl fluffy, furry, some. I don't know. Call it whatever you want. And we're going to go ahead and move on to coloring this guy. Let's go ahead and move Julie over just a little bit. So we are focusing on our furry friend here. Okay. I'm going to take your brown. Just make it a little bit more saturated. Just a tad. Color him in. This guy should be a little bit easier because he's fairly simple. But I will add in some hue shifts, a little bit of shading here and there. I'll make him look good. I'll make him look nice and good since he is a little bit more simple. We'll add more detail within the color, if you will. If you will. 
Okay. Moving on, moving on. We need to color his eyes blue. Must have blue eyes. Hey! Wow, that looks nice. That looks really nice. That was totally by accident that that blue looked that good. How about that? Hmm? You know, I realize maybe I maybe I'm feeling this way because I've never done the transition. I've never transitioned just from one day into the next. So I'm feeling like really like out of my element. You know what I mean? I don't know. You probably you guys probably don't care, but I just I feel something. A disturbance within the force of the artist. Yeah, I love this character. Seriously. Everything about this character I love. I've said it once, I'll say it again. You guys are awesome at making characters. You guys have great design skills. Man, I'm just really impressed by you guys. So please can consider and continue submitting your art, submitting your characters, if you want them to be drawn. Freaking awesome. And I just love, I love simple designs, simple, effective designs. That's really where my heart is. That's where my heart is as an artist. Simple and effective. Bang for your buck. Awesome, memorable characters that don't cost an arm and a leg to draw. Awesome! Color those lines, and then we're going to move on to my personal favorite. Penguin Amazon. Pe well, we'll say it again when we actually move over to her. But yes, for now we're sticking with um, Furry Man, Furry Dude. Great. Love it. Now we move on to Penguin Amazon. Go ahead and grab the colors. Grab our awesome original piece by Rachel. My personal favorite of the day. Let's go ahead and drop in these colors. Hmm. Okay. Uh, where are we going to put this? Uh, maybe there. Yeah. No, I don't want to color, cover up the sexy legs. Let's just stick it there for now. Color coming in. Copy that. Okay, let's begin our adventure. Our adventure. We're just going to be just a little bit more tan. A little bit more tan. More like that. Yeah. Start dark, paint the light. Start dark, paint the light. That's my rule. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of lightness to the skin here. Keep it simple. Whoops. And a little bit of pigment. Let's not forget the pigment in the skin. I did forget it in Julie. That's what we're missing in Julie. We need, she needs pigment on her cheeks. Not Pikmin. Pigment. <laughs> Sounds like I'm saying Pikmin every time I say that. Okay, let's put a little bit there, a little bit there. Let's get this awesome bluish penguin fur taken from the slain monster penguins who dare stand in her way. 
I just I look at this character, I look at this girl, and I'm trying to figure out like what is what is her story? What is her motivation? Why does she hunt these penguins? Is it revenge? Is it just a good way to pass the time? What is her reasoning? Does she like prinnies? <laughs> it reminds me. It reminds me of prinnies. I, I like prinnies. Prinnies are just a good old, good old fashioned good time. Okay. Uh, let's paint the beak. Get that up in here. Oh, I almost forgot to paint her boobs too. Forgot to paint her boobs. Oh, please forgive me. Forgive me. Didn't mean to neglect the chest. I'm sorry. There we go. Tragedy averted. Tragedy averted. Okay. Eyes and teeth. Mm hmm. And let's not forget the lips. Another reason why I like this character. Really awesome lips. And the red hair as well. Hmm. Something about those lips could be better. Yeah. There we go. I just need to be a little bit more pink. A little bit more pink. All right. Let's move on to the hair. Hair, I'm actually just going to make the same color as the lips because I love it when different parts of the character kind of share similar colors. It's really good when you're doing comics because it just makes it a lot easier. You can just be like, okay, here's the lips and the hair. Same color. Straight up. All right, you guys, you guys in your comments, you guys are funny. Um, okay, I'm just gonna paint behind that, assuming that it's going in the right place, because I'm just that good. Okay, um, and the scarf, probably gonna make it just that little bit of yellow, similar to the penguin's beak. And she's got like this gold, she actually has gold uh, arm plates here too, or bracers, or whatever the heck these things are. Love it! And let's not forget about these blades. And her little leather straps. And the sword. And then we're going to go back and do a little bit of overpainting on each of these characters, because we've got about five minutes to go, and then we're done. Then we are done. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Freaking awesome. Okay, let's go back to Julie. Oh, wait. Hang on. Wait. Sorry, Julie. You're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. We forgot to color the lines on our Amazon. Woman. Okay, yeah, I'm actually just going to color the skin, all this stuff red. Just going to go red, red, red. When in doubt, use red. Red always looks good on most things. And yeah, that'll wrap that up. Very good. Now we can go back to Julie. Going on back to Julie. We forgot her blushy cheeks. How dare I? How dare I forget blushy cheeks on my girls? <sighs> losing it. I'm just losing it. See, isn't that? I just love what that does to the face. It just makes it look so much more alive. Awesome. A living thing, a living creature. 
Now we're going to move into my personal favorite point, which is OP time. OP over paint layers. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll finish up today's daily. Woo! Woo! My voice is like going. It's probably a good thing that I'm taking a break. It's probably a good thing that I'm taking a break because my voice has been going, going, and it is about to be gone. It's about to vanish into thin air. And I, it's not like I've been yelling all day. I haven't even been talking. And singing in my car, that's about it. But that just doesn't make sense. Does not make sense. Inexcusable. Unacceptable. I have people I need to speak to. So therefore, losing my voice is not an option. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, just overpaint. Overpaint, overpaint, clean it up, clean it up. Actually, I'm not going to worry too much about, well, I'm glad I cleaned up the hat because it was a little sloppy. But I'm going to focus on the faces, the important part. Let's get the goods. Let's focus on the goods. Let's focus on our faces. Make them look good for presentation, for when people see these on Facebook, hopefully. Hopefully all the artists that I do today get to see their pictures on Facebook. That would make me very happy. Everybody be sure to message them saying, hey, I drew your character. Go check it out. Good. Good. Cleaning up face. Simplifying and cleaning up. I really like the OP layer. And the reason why I like overpainting is because I really feel like at that point, all the hard work's done and literally I just get to kick back and this is the point where I feel like I could just watch a movie. You could be watching a movie on the other screen. And it's just, I don't know, it's very methodical. It's very, I don't know what the word is. It's now the point, it's, it's the home stretch, right? It's the home stretch, that's what it is. You're just making everything look nice now. Again, not thinking too hard. You never really should be thinking too hard whenever you're drawing a piece, but really, more than ever, I just allow myself to relax at this point. That's why I like this stuff. That's why I like overpainting. Alright. It's looking really good. I like that a lot. Clean up these ears really quick and then we're going to move on to what little we have to do on equines. I don't know if I really have to do a lot of paint overs on, on equines. Because his character is simple and awesome like that. It does not require hours upon hours to draw. We like that. We like the simple things. We cherish the simple things. All right. Yeah, I like it. I also really like ears. Ears are very fun to draw as well. I used to hate ears, but that was before I discovered the C3PO technique. And for those of you who do not know what that is, I will demonstrate. Okay, so for those of you who want to remember how to draw ears for the rest of your life and never forget, just remember this technique right here. I will show you. Okay, so you got your ear like this. Okay, here's your ear sticking off. Now, what I want you to do is go like this. You will draw. Remember exactly how I do this. <laughs> See? Like that. Oh, right. See? Like that. See? 
three, P. Oh yeah, and then O. Oh, that's O. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this. It's just, it's up here, but, okay, okay. So, C, th three, P, O. And that is how you draw an ear, right there. Ha! See that? Look at that. That's what you call the C3PO technique. Never forget it. Never forget it, like I just did. <laughs> moving on. Moving on to Equan's uh, fuzzy critter. Let's go ahead and take care of that. No, I don't want to go back to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, good. We didn't lose it. Good. We didn't lose it. I almost lost it. <laughs> oh, I'm, just having, I'm having way too much fun on this show. Way too much fun. Back to being professional. Let's get back to this. Because professionals, as we know, are not into fun. We are into being serious. Getting the job done, son. So, uh, I'm mostly just going to clean up these eyes. I'm mostly going to clean up these eyes on Equan because I really like the way these look. And I just think it looks good when you have nice, clean eyes. You don't want dirty eyes. No. You don't want dirt in your eyes. That's painful. Painful. Get that out of there. Get that crap out of there. Okay. And I really like this blue that came through. It was awesome. Totally by accident, but hey, let's take credit for it anyway. It was the mix of the lines and the color that I laid behind it that created this awesome blue. What color is that exactly? Ah! I look, it's like a really desaturated, kind of purplish blue. Very cool. Very cool. Let's clean up the teeth as well. Don't want to have dirty teeth. And before we move on to our penguin Amazon, I'm going to take a quick break and just stretch my wrist. Because as you know, I do like to take breaks and all that good stuff. And I will check out the chat. So anything else that you guys had to ask, if you had another question, feel free to fire it off right now. I'm going to be taking a break for about 45 seconds as soon as I finish this little guy right here. And I'll move into our final thing. Oh! We've gone for an hour. That's okay, because we ain't done until the fat lady sings. Or in this case, the penguin Amazon is colored properly. Mm. All right. Kind of blend this a little bit. I really like what's happening here. I just want to blend it so it's a little smoother. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome texture. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. See what the OP does? Just cleans everything up. Makes it look really nice. Really nice. All right, short break. Short break before we move into our Penguin Amazon. And maybe this is where we can talk a little bit about Thoughtful Thursday. This is the thoughtful wrist stretching break. And on that note, yes, I do want to talk about, yes, how important it is to actually take breaks. It's very important to take breaks. Stretch your wrist. Otherwise, you will develop hand cramps. You will develop tendinitis. You have to go see a specialist and a doctor like I had to. And uh, yeah, you'll basically uh, hate working. You'll hate doing what you love, what you're best at, because your back will hurt, your wrist hurts, and you feel like you're becoming an old man, like you're, you're done with the day and your hand is just like stuck like this. You're like, what the, you just like smack it out, right? You get to, like shake it out, but it's still like that. It's really scary. Um, 
so yeah, make sure you're stretching, make sure you take breaks. And um, yeah, um, and more than anything, I think the really awesome thing about taking breaks is that you get to come back to your work. You come back to your work when it's all done, or rather when you're all done taking a break, and you just you see it. You see it with fresh eyes once again. And you come up with like ideas of how you can improve upon whatever you're working on. This constantly happens when I'm working with the comic. I'll be struggling with this panel or like the face looks weird. I'll just walk away for 35 minutes, come back, and then the face is there. Like I can just I can see it. It's like, oh, all I had to do was just move this eyebrow up a little bit. Or I just had to open the eyes a little bit more. And then it gave me the expression that I wanted. So, um, Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Burstcraft is saying, "What? Since I'm streaming on Twitch, what what game do I play? Photoshop game? <laughs> yes. Uh, Keenan Lafferty is now playing Photoshop. That is a good. That is a good thing. I actually have been thinking about. I've gotten offers to go to other art streaming um, sites like Picardo." But the reason why I don't want to go there is because simply Twitch just has a way better interface. Like everything's just cleaner. It's really nice how all the links are down here and just like all the frequently asked questions. And I just feel like their interface and their layout is way better. So until Picarto catches up to that, I'm just gonna keep biding my time on uh, on Twitch, or until they kick me off. <laughs> By the t this is the way I like it. By the time that Twitch would give a crap about me streaming art. Um, it would probably be at the point where I have a huge audience, and then hey, I'm just driving traffic to Twitch anyway, so why would they care? You know, it's like, hey, we do games and art now because we can make money off of all the ad revenue that we're generating, which I don't see a penny of, but that is okay. That's another conversation for never. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do some OP, OP stuff on this and then we're gonna end today's show end today's super long show try to add in a little bit of this uh, texture a little bit of furry texture good 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 okay that's good never forget the shininess Never forget to put the shines on your character. Okay. Make sure we get some really good detail on the boobage. You know, focal points. Remember your focal points. Let's go and get that scarf in. It looks good. And I really want to do a little bit of overpainting on the hair. And this might be a good. Example. Someone was asking about hair earlier, and this is something that I really like to do. I like to think of it in terms of just shapes, and then I like to go in and I like to paint highlights. So stuff like this going through. So like that, like that, a little bit of highlight going through here. And that's basically how I detail the hair. I just like to throw in little highlights here and there. See what it does, see how it makes me feel. And then before you know it, you got some awesome looking hair. And then you may rejoice. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give her red eyes because red eyes makes everybody look cooler, as we have seen in the comic. I'm going to clean up the face a little bit more. Cool. Um, I liked what was happening here a little bit more before I overpainted that. There we go. Good, good, and good. Um, let's see. What else do we need to do? I feel like we're finishing up here. Getting the last little bits of detail where we need it. Mm 
But I've had a lot of fun drawing these characters today. And I've had a lot of fun streaming for an hour. Crazy as that may seem. We usually don't go this long. Over an hour. We've been going for almost an hour and 15 minutes. So this should definitely be enough to hold you over. Until next Monday. Next Monday. For those of you who didn't hear the announcement earlier, yes, no show tomorrow or Thursday. Apologize. Gonna be out of town, out of town, visiting my brother, Quentin, who you guys have not seen. You guys have seen Deebs on the show, but you've not seen Quentin. Quentin is my other brother from the same mother. Okay. Mmm. Oh. Just forgot the shines on the legs. Ha. <laughs> Looks great. And I am going to kind of soften the shading on the legs just a little bit. It is a bit rough around the edges, and I like to have nice, clean, easy transitions, especially on the skin areas. Skin is a very, very important thing to make sure you get right. Make it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean and looking good. Hmm. I dare say I like it. That's it. That's it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Man, I'm really tired. I, I just really feel really tired on this. That's crazy. But I can take a nap now that the show is finally over. I can rest the next two days while we're driving to San Diego. With all that out of the way, thank you guys once again for joining me live on Twitch for submitting your awesome characters. Once again, thank you. Special thanks to Bob Tinsley, Equan, and Rachel. Thank you guys for submitting your awesome characters. And yours could be up next, next week. So submit your stuff to the Facebook. You guys take care of yourselves. Have a great rest of the week and a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Until next time, you guys take care.